There are many special events where ham operators participate. So here's a good example. Every year the Boy Scouts have a jamboree somewhere in the country. And the FCC will issue a special event call sign with a single letter for both prefix and suffix, like let's say W6B. Now, let me give you a little note here. A call letter with one letter, a call sign with one letter in the front and one letter in the back is not issued to us. Okay. Never, never, never. They're only issued to special events. So, these calls, so, so if you say to the FCC, hey, we're the Boy Scouts and we're having our jamboree this year down in Mississippi, we're going to operate our radio stations there, but we want a special event call. They might give them a special event call, okay? And the call sign is only going to be good for the length of the event, which might be one day, two days, three days, and that's it. So whenever you hear a call sign on the radio that's one letter and one letter, it's a special event. That's all you got to know. And this is referred to as a one-by-one one call, okay? one-by-one. One. So these special event temporary one-by-one one call stations are for ham operation in conjunction with an activity of special significance to the ham community. I'll give you another example. There's a, there's a weekend in the year when hams go to every lighthouse in the world. And they operate in and what everybody tries to do, if you're not part of it, I'm sitting at home, I could try to make a contact with as many of these lighthouses, ham radios, as I can. And whoever makes the most contacts wins a, wins a little prize, okay? But that's another example of, uh, of when people are issued one-by-one one calls. So if our local radio club wants to go down to the lighthouse down here at Palos Verdes, they can say, hey, we want a one-by-one one call for the lighthouse weekend. Okay, good. Uh, they also do the same thing for uh, operating on a weekend from every island in the world. That's another one. So the FCC will issue call signs to, oh, this is a different subject now. You have a radio club, okay? Well, you all have call signs, but the radio club can have a call sign. So the FCC will issue a call sign to a radio club, but the call sign must have at least four members. So I can't say that I'm a radio club. <laughs> Give me a call sign. No, there's gotta be at least four legal members who are, who are amateur radio operators. Uh, a member of the club is called the call sign administrator. So there's a person called the call sign administrator who technically is the custodian of the call sign. So it's his address, it's his name, but technically it can be the Palace Radio Amateur Radio Club or the Hermosa School Radio Club. But somebody who has a license will be the administrator, and that's, that's the address of the person. Okay, call signs. When you're on one of these radios, any kind of, any kind of amateur radios, you're required to transfer your call sign. How are we doing on time? We have like five minutes. Pardon me? No, no, we have like eight, eight minutes. Okay, call, stop me right when we have okay. to stop, okay? If you're, requ you're required to give your call sign every 10 minutes and at the end of a contact. So when I'm talking to somebody, that's a contact. We're talking, talking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, I might transmit for 30 seconds and you're transmitting for a second. And I talk for 30 seconds and you talk for 30 seconds. Neither one of us has to give their call until 10 minutes. At the 10 minute point, I have to say K1DFO, you have to give your call. And we talk for four or five more minutes, then we're all done. I have to give my call sign again at the very end of the contact. Okay? So that's called the contact now. Uh, forget this, it's in the Gordon West book. Don't worry about it, you don't have the Gordon West book, so just put scratch through that, don't even worry about that. Just scratch that out, okay? Okay, now. The interesting thing is this, when you, when you get on the, the radio, what you're going to find is that most hams give their call and the other person's call every time they start and every time they end. So let's say you're w 6 am Here's what most hams do. w 6 am this is K1DFO. Chat, 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 chat. And I want to go back to you. Oh, w 6 am this is K1DFO. And then you'll come on and say, K1DFO, this is w 6 am Chat, 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 chat. And you do the same thing. And that's what hams typically do it's not a requirement. They only have to give their call every 10 minutes or at the very end of the contact. Okay, okay. when doing an on-air transmission to test your equipment, you must give, you must still give a proper identification. What does that mean? Here's what that means. I'm going to set this radio up. It's like a little computer. Well, at certain times, I've got to push the transfer button. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just... Test, 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 if 
I do this for more than 10 minutes, I gotta get my call at 10 minutes. Or if I only do it for like a minute and a half, when I'm done, I gotta get my call. That's all it says, okay? okay? The identification must also be given every 10 minutes during the test and at the end of the test, okay? Whatever. When operating using a microphone, you must give your station call, station identification, which I call a call sign in English. Now, why English? Because that's our language. If this was France right now, this answer would be, we must give your call sign in French. So what it's saying is, I can get on, I can get on and I can talk to you in German. We can talk back and forth, but every time I give my call, I have to give my call in English. This is K1DFO. In the U.S., I have to do that. Okay? okay? Makes sense? What if you're in a different country? Do you still have to, but you're from the U.S.? I'm licensed in the U.S., so I give it in English. Okay. Yeah. The FCC encourages the use of phonetic alphabet when giving your call station, but it's not required. Uh, the IFE phonetic alphabet is on the next chart. Let me just show you. You don't have to memorize this, but there's a lot of letters, K1DFO. There's a lot of letters in the alphabet that on a radio might sound pretty much the same. So sometimes some say, this is K1 Delta, Foxtrot, Oscar. Okay. So those words make it much easier to know what the letters were. Do you have to use this? No, you don't. Just a suggestion by the ITU. If you move to another district, let's say you move to Nevada, you are now in Southern Land, you can request a call from that district. So if I move from California, which is the sixth district, to Nevada, the seventh district, I can ask for a new call. It'll have a seven in it. It'll be a brand new call, okay? <coughs> when you get your original call, let's say you got WZ6YXQ, that's a terrible call. You'll find out why in a few minutes. You can say the FCC, you can send the FCC a thing and say, oh, give me another call. All they're going to do <coughs> is when they get your letter, they're going to give you whatever the next sequence is. You might still get WZ, you will get a six, but they might be down to YZZ. You simply get whatever's next in the sequence, okay? But you can ask the FCC for a new call. Okay, so it'll be issued in the sequence, okay? There's no questions here, this is for your finish. But you can also request what's called special letters, okay? These are called vanity calls. So I could ask for K1WFO. That's my name, Walter Frederick Ordway. Oh, how interesting. Uh, someone could ask for K6MEL. Maybe their name is Mel Smith. This is a vanity call, okay? Or W6AL, Al Jones or Adam Lewis. So these are called vanity calls. And once you get your call letters, say, yeah, I don't like that. I'll look up in the database. I'll, I think I'd like a call that's got this. Uh, if it's not being issued, it hasn't been issued to anybody, you can send a to the FCC and, and get that call, okay? Tell me when I gotta stop. So okay. does that mess up their sequence? Oh well, no, Maybe that's, it, well, they still do the sequence, but they're, they are, they're open to giving out vanity calls. Okay. Yeah, so when they get to that, when that call in the sequence, then they just have to skip over because it's already been used, see? When operating an event like a marathon, it's helpful to use what's called tactical calls. So when we do the Palace Royce Marathon, we have like 25 ham radio operators out on the course, okay? They're at every water station. So when one of them wants to call the person who's running the whole, who's the net control, they don't say, well, this is K1DFO, because, I mean, everybody else is listening. Where's K1DFO? Where's K1DFO? I need more, uh, more cups over here. Well, where is he? Oh, so a tactical call would say, this is water station three. We can choose some more cups, K1DFO. Ah, now everybody knows see, the tactical call I used was Water Station 3. Everybody knows exactly where that is on the course. Let me give you another example. I have licensed about 40 or 50 people in the Palos Verdes Unified School District. There's at least three or four ham radio operators at every school in the school district. Because they know in an emergency, that school will be used as a facility. So, what's their tactical call? Oh, uh, this is Rancho Palos Verdes Intermediate School. Now, that, the person will give their callers after, but their tactical call is the name of the school. You get it? Okay, so a tactical call like race headquarters will be used when working a racing event, fine. But when you're using a tactical call in the event, you must still give your ham radio call. Okay, that's like understood. This is a different issue. Let's say you're from, uh, you are from Alaska, where the call is KL7CC, okay? But you are operating in, in the third district, uh, let's say like Maryland. You're visiting someone in Maryland. You, you want to use your radio. You want to talk to somebody. And you're on a phone. Uh, 
you need to kind of indicate that you're not in Alaska. So you could say, this is KL7CC stroke W3. If you get the W, it just means I'm in three land. <coughs> or this is KL7CC slant W3. This is KL7CC slash W3. So you can, <coughs> the in, indication is I'm telling people I'm in three land, not KL7. Land. Okay, the self-assigned indicator you use can't conflict with FCC rules. Okay, fine. No problem with that. I think we're getting close to the end. Yeah, one more minute. One minute? Hold on, see. Okay, we got three charts left, so I think we'll finish this section. <clears throat> Once you're licensed, you can transmit from any place in the 50 states in U.S. possessions. That makes sense. The U.S. ham is allowed to communicate with a ham in a foreign country if that government permits. Not every government in the world lets their hams talk to people in other countries. There's a, there's a list, okay? The FCC defines this as international communications incidental to the purpose of amateur radio and remarks of a personal character. Now, what does all that legal mean? It says no business, this, you can't do business, you cannot do business over the radio, you can't get payments, and it can be no obscenities. That's the easy way of summarize that answer. The U.S. ham is not allowed to communicate with a ham in a foreign country if it is prohibited by either country, i.e., the country notified the ITU that objects to these communications. Now, let me give you an example. You, we cannot talk to a ham in North Korea. North Korea is a country that the U.S. has said, nope, I'm not letting you talk to anybody in North Korea. Back during the war days, there was a lot of countries that we couldn't talk to, but now it's just simply North Korea. You can also transfer from you can also transmit from a foreign country. I can go to Mexico and to Canada, which authorizes it. So this is called a reciprocal operating agreement. So I can go in Canada and I can operate from Canada, A1DFO slash VE, as long as the Canadian version of the FCC says that it's okay to do that. That's all it that means. Uh, don't worry about this. The Gordy book you can scratch it off. He has a list of those countries. And I think we're getting to the end here. Okay. Now I'm going to send a message from someplace to someplace. So I got a US ham. I got another hand who's in a foreign country. Okay, we got that. And the message I want to send to this person is, is to a, a person who could be in any part of the world. Well, let's say over by what he does. Now, hey, Fred, I got a message for you for Tom over there where you are. Well, I can do that as long as the governments of each country approve that. Okay, that's what that's all about. And when we're doing that, our country to another country is sending a message. The U.S. GAM gives both calls after each transmission. I have to get both call signs before and after each transmission. No payments are allowed for any of this. And if we get the Gordon West book thing, we can shut that off. Yeah, I think this is the last sheet. Where can I use my... Okay. You can also operate on a vessel, a vessel or a craft located in international waters. It is documented or registered in the U.S. Documented or registered in the U.S. Okay? So I can be on a cruise. If the vessel is a cruise ship, then you also need the permission of the ship's captain. Uh, there was a ham radio group who got permission to set up antennas and operate their radios on a big cruise ship, the Carnival Cruises, back in 2006, 2008, 2010. And I was on the 2010. They're now planning a, a cruise for uh, 2011. I think your notes say 2012. So an FCC license operator is not normally allowed to communicate with other persons in a different radio service. Like, this is a different subject now. We share frequencies with other radio services. So there's a, there's a maritime radio services that has some same frequencies we're on. And I can hear them, they can hear me. But they're a different radio service. I'm not allowed to talk to them. Okay? There's a couple exceptions. You just memorize the answer. During an emergency, all the rules go away. We'll to talk about that again next week. With the U and I can also talk with US military station during an armed forces day test. OK, just memorize that answer. They're not amateur radios, but I says I can do that. I think that's the end of this. So we have gotten through two, two sections.